Action appeal brings protest against the death sentences from members all around the world. The Monsieur l'Ambassadeur de Je voudrais vous parler des 62 personnes qui ont été condamnées à mort dans votre pays. Je suis membre d'Amnesty International et je voudrais vous prier d'utiliser votre influence pour que ces personnes soient exécutées. Nous avons nous avons que 62 personnes ont été condamnées à mort dans votre pays. Sentence in your country and express our very, very great concern. Amnesty International is opposed to the death penalty in all cases because, as the Universal Declaration of Human Rights stated, no one should be subjected to cruel and inhuman punishment. A thousand voices raised for the forgotten. Do they hear them? Do they know? The young Soviet human rights activist, Vladimir Bukovsky, was released into exile straight from the labor camp where he was serving a 12-year sentence for exposing human rights violations in the Soviet Union. He had served four terms of imprisonment. The campaign on his behalf made him one of the world's best-known prisoners of conscience at the time. Everything I'll tell you tomorrow, excuse me very much. You How do you feel? I am very tired, you know. The last time I was arrested in 1971, uh, that was for exposing the abuse of psychiatry in the Soviet Union for political purposes, uh, collecting documents and facts and proofs and making different interviews with the media, foreign correspondents in the Soviet Union. Uh, for that, I've got 12 years last time. Well, one of the common punishments in the Soviet Union in Soviet jails and camps will be a punishment by starvation and cold and isolation. That's the most widely spread uh, punishment they use. It might go up to one year of isolation, complete isolation, and the reduction in the food ration might go as low as to keep you just on the verge of dying. So in psychiatric hospitals, there might be some other uh, cruelties committed uh, with patients, inmates, uh, including the use of uh, painful medicine with very painful and harmful side effects. Also could be some physical measures of restraint, uh, including the famous or ill-famous roll-up when the prisoners are rolled into the uh, vat canvas or vat uh, uh, towels from the heels up to the armpits and left in this way to dry up. When this material dries, it shrinks and produces a terrible pain. And sometimes, most, most often, people faint and there were a few cases of death in this, uh, during that kind of treatment. As soon as I became known uh, in the West for my uh, protest campaign, the treatment became better. And every time, as I said, when the uh, campaign of protest would be increased and stepped up and publicity would be stepped up, the treatment always would improve and the authorities would treat me much more cautiously and softly, carefully, avoiding unnecessary for them uh, implications. Uh, they always are at pains to show how little they have, uh, how little regard they have for the international public opinion or public pressure uh, in foreign countries. But in fact, they are very sensitive to it, much more than people realize. On the day that we filmed in Lima, a commission of European human rights groups visited the city. And the government released 20 people who had been held without trial for up to five years. <laughs> My name is Alcolino Gomez Sanchez, native of Andaguayos. I am 32 years old, with four children and a widowed mother. I was arrested on the 5th of June, 1981. Before my arrest, I was a municipal worker and a union leader. We were arrested with other people. Peasants, students, professional people, craftsmen. And at the police department at Andaguayos, we were cruelly tortured. The torture consists of 
They were the normal torches, the scientific police torches, and other kinds as well. They arrested me for supposed crimes of terrorism, which is not true. I am not a terrorist. What crime did we commit? Being peasant leaders, being union leaders, defending the peasants, defending human rights. That is our crime. That's why we were kept in the prison of Andaguayas for so long. Nineteen others were brought here with me, kept here for 50 months, just to be released. They let us out of prison only today. We were freed five hours ago. The ill treatment of prisoners can become an institution in any society. Narciso Julian Sanz was a prisoner for 25 years in Franco, Spain. The worst of all for me at that time, the worst was the electric current. The electric current because of the shock. It was a chair, an ordinary chair. And on each arm of the chair they put a handcuff. And there was a piece of equipment, a big box. And there was a switch and cables to the chair. And then they switched the machine on. And well, the reaction, the violent reaction, it was like an explosion in the brain. All I can say is that I gave a jump with the chair and everything. And when I came to, I was on the ground, on the ground in a pool of water, because you lose consciousness, like, like with the other torches, and they leave you on the floor, and they throw water to bring you round. That was the worst. An Amnesty International group meets in today's Madrid. We are writing to you. To you. Letters are written on behalf of individual prisoners in Mozambique and Syria. Amnesty International depends on public support and relies on individual donations to protect its independence. At the heart of the campaign lies a profound concern for the individual victims. Once they are identified, no effort is spared to help them. I was arrested in uh, 1974 in July. I was arrested together with my sister-in-law and one of my friends. And it was the uh, middle of night. And uh, we mm, three were taken to the police custody. And uh, we were in police custody 27 days. And almost every day we were tortured by police. Arkana Guha was a school teacher in Calcutta. Police arrested her because they suspected a member of her family of belonging to the Naxalites, an extreme political group. One day, I was tied up um, together with my hand and leg, and one stick was um, placed uh, behind my knees, and uh, that stick was placed uh, on the two chair, and um, I was uh, hung uh, between the two chair with um, with uh, head down. And in that position, uh, I was kicked in my boot, and uh, I was burned by burning cigar. When she was found by an Amnesty International mission, she was completely unable to walk. 
She was brought to a hospital in Denmark. And I was uh, in a hospital about three months. And then two and a half months, after two and a half months, then I started to walk. And um, I remember the first day when I walked on to a stay. Oh, it was so yeah, nice and I never forget. We now have uh, thousands and thousands of prisoners of conscience imprisoned either in psychiatric hospitals or in jails or, or, or camps, uh, including all members of Helsinki monitoring groups, such as Professor Yuri Arlov and uh, Anatoly Sharansky. Even Andrei Sakharov uh, is illegally banished. There are dozens of other people whom I'd like to mention, like uh, Kovalev. Uh, and his wife, Osipova, who just recently got additional sentence while serving the previous one in the camp. Or people like Lev Lukyanenko, who is serving 30 years, and Ivan Kandiba. All these decent people who did not commit any crimes or any violence uh, in prison just for, for their beliefs and opinions. All over the world, peaceful dissent is being suppressed. Unprovoked attacks on demonstrators in South Africa. The incarceration of prisoners of conscience in country after country. Public political trials in Libya. Followed by public execution. The abuses take place in countries of all ideologies, in time of peace and in time of war. All of them violate the fundamental freedom and dignity of the human person. But hope cannot be crushed. Each day another prisoner, somewhere, is released. Julio de Peña Valdez, is a trade union leader in the Dominican Republic. In 1965, there was a civilian and military uprising in our country. As a result of a coup by the democratic government of President Valdosa in 1963. Revolution in the Dominican Republic, just east of Cuba and on America's doorstep, is a situation causing concern for the United States. A batch of 14,000 Marines and paratroops... Was a new government was installed in the Republic, which over a period of years became steadily more repressive. This government took away democratic freedom. They violated human rights and worsened the conditions of unemployment and hunger in which the majority of Dominicans were living. The union movement, of which we were the leaders, came under heavy repression by Baragel's government. And in January 1971, we were arrested and taken to an underground prison for a period of nine months. We were held in solitary confinement, completely naked. We were not even allowed soap or toothpaste. The first letter from Amnesty International showed its effectiveness when the police allowed us mattresses in our cells, allowed us to take showers and to put on our clothes. The next batch of letters from Amnesty International fought for us to be allowed to see our families and have food brought in. More letters from Amnesty arrived and we were allowed to go before the court so that a judge could consider our case. Then the number of letters exceeded 1,000 and the President of the Republic was forced to call us to the Palacio Nacional to show us these letters and to indicate that he had nothing against us. How was it possible that, being a political prisoner, 
and a trade unionist, and not a high government official, that I should have so many friends in so many parts of the world. And finally, when the letters went into thousands, the president had no alternative but to set us free. A thousand letters, a thousand voices for the forgotten. Nest fargehandel, fargesenter på Løkkeveien, nå med ny parkeringsplass. Eneforhandler av Bergen Malingsfabrikk i Rogeland.